Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Minecraft from the Hermitcraft Season 9 server. Today is a glorious day because today we get to continue our work on the museum, adding a bunch of artifacts and a bunch of crazy things that we've collected over the last few weeks. And today we are focusing on pottery shards. And it is called shards, actually. I don't understand why it's called shard, S-H-E-R-D, when it's pronounced shard, S-H-A-R-D. English is a weird language, guys. That's all I'm going to say. But uh, our goal with these pottery shards, we want to display both the pot with the shard, like this, and also the shard itself, like this, in this room somewhere. And so what I'm thinking is we have all the types of pottery shards, and... We've sort of organized them by the structure they're found in. So, for instance, like, these are all cold ocean ruins. These are all warm ocean ruins. These are all trail ruins. We got the wells down here, and then we got the desert temple right here. And I thought it would be cool, maybe instead of just, like, putting a pillar down with those shards on them, uh, it might be cool if we made, like, a big structure representing each of the different types of structures where you can find these in, and then putting that corresponding shard and pot in that structure that we make here. So that's, I think, what we're going to do. Uh, this whole room will just be only pottery shards, so we have a lot of room to work with. Um, so I think the first one we're going to make is going to be in this corner here. I think we're going to go with the smallest one, which is the Desert Well. Yeah, these two are the Desert Well pottery shards. Um, so we're going to make something there with some sandstone and stuff, which I've gathered over here. we got some suspicious sand as well we could possibly use. Uh, if we want to do that, we got some slabs. And so we're going to make ourselves a little, like, mini desert well-esque structure that also showcases the pottery. All right, everyone. So here we have our desert well pots and sherds structure. As you can see, it pays homage to the desert well. It's just one block wider than the actual desert well. But I think the extra wideness helps out a little bit because it helps to display the pot uh, with the arms up or the brewery. Uh, shard. So, yeah, we have the pot and the shard here, obviously. We got some water filled in, and we'll probably want to do like this, because in the actual desert well, there's like sand down here underneath of these areas. So, we'll do that. And there we go. Alright, so, desert well is now done. Uh, that's basically all there is to this one. This one only has two different unique pottery shards. Um, so, yeah. That one is the one with the least, but the next one we're going to build, I think, over here, like in this entire section. Uh, we're going to use some mud and some terracotta and stuff, which I've gathered up over here. Yeah, some coarse dirt, uh, some terracotta stuff, some brick stuffs. We're going to make, and I think I also have mud, yeah, mud bricks. Yeah, we'll get some of this stuff out of here, some gravel, some suspicious gravel, which we have a ton of. Uh, and we're going to make a trail ruins section here which has seven pottery shards, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, yeah, seven pottery shards. So this is going to take up a lot more room. Going to be a lot bigger structure than the Desert Well one, but I'm excited to do it. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, take a look. We got our Trail Ruins structure now up. Here it is. Got a, quite a combination of blocks here because the Trail Ruins themselves are kind of chaotic. So we put in a lot of, you know, mud bricks and stuff. We got some uh, suspicious gravel. We got some cobblestone. Then, of course, we got, you know, some, like, mud brick wall and some other blocks, like stone bricks and stuff as well to sort of round it out. Inside, it's also chaotic, but we had to order it a little bit because we wanted people to be able to, like, move around and see all the uh, pots and the shards. So we got the burn. We got the, I think this is the sheaf pottery shard. We got the Heartbreak, we got the Danger one right here. Of course, we only have uh, two of these, or sorry, we only have three of these. So we have two on the pot and then one down here. As we get more shards, uh, what we can do is we can just break this, right? And then just recreate it and then, yeah, just put down the shards again and then put back in these. And then, yeah, as we get more shards, we can add these to the... Uh, the pottery pieces, so that's great. We got the heart shard right here. We got the friend shard right here. Again, this one only has one, so we need to get some more of those. Uh, and then we have the uh, howl shard and, and pot. So I think it's kind of cool. Um, yeah, again, 
Blaze so terracotta. We got some workstations in here. We got a furnace. We got a grindstone, crafting table, flower pot, because you can actually find flower pots inside the trail ruins. Also with the windows, we added a little detail here, like we have red uh, panes in the windows and orange panes and then red panes again. You can actually find those when you brush the uh, blocks here, the uh, suspicious gravel blocks here, these guys. So yeah, that's kind of cool. And also a little bit of a spoiler on the back side of the, of the sign here, it says visit our gift shop to buy sherds because we're actually planning to sell uh, sherds in the gift shop here in the museum. That's right. We make in a gift shop. Yep. Yep. So that's pretty cool. Really digging this. This thing looks really awesome. I don't know. I just really like it. We added these little brick structures in here, which the actual trail ruins have as well. You know, we got some little shelving here and there. It's just a really nice area, despite the fact that it's like kind of chaotic. So yeah, I'm digging it. And of course, lots of suspicious uh, gravel around here. So yeah, that is our trail ruins build. Uh, next up, I think we're going to go with the, let's see here, not that one. I think we're going to go with the cold ocean ruins. So these right here, Explorer, Blade, Plenty, and Mourner. I think we're going to make that on this side over here. So let's get started on that. That's going to require a bunch of stone stuff. So like cracked stone bricks. And I think I brought, yeah, mossy stone bricks, magma blocks, uh, a little bit of granite, actually a little bit of polished granite. Uh, and things of that nature. So let's go ahead and make our cold ocean ruins right here. All right, guys. So cold ocean ruins area is now done. Here's what it's looking like. Of course, we got the chiseled stone bricks. Uh, we got the regular stone bricks, the mossy, the cracked. Uh, we also got the uh, gravel down as well as the uh, suspicious gravel in some spots. Uh, we got some magma blocks around to simulate, you know, it's in the ocean. You usually have a lot of these magma blocks forming bubble columns nearby. I thought about actually putting all the water in, like basically submerging it, but it got a little bit too complex because you have these areas in the back here uh, that you can come in, like from the back side, into the museum. Uh, and yeah, water was like spilling out, so I ended up not doing that. Uh, but yeah, here's the four types of shards. You got the mourner shard, you got the blade shard, the explorer shard, and the plenty shard with the chest on it, uh, which is kind of cool. And then you have, yeah, some of these pillars around here and some more uh, stone and stuff to sort of like fill out the whole rest of the area. But uh, yeah, kind of a cool thing, I think. Uh, so that's the cold ocean ruins done. And now we're moving on to the warm ocean ruins, which only have three shards. But I think I'm going to add a fourth one. Uh, and I'm just going to put in like the default like blank pot. Uh, just because three is kind of tough to get to <laughs> uh, with what I want to do. And basically what I want to do here is I want to uh, make a long archway that's reminiscent of some of the warm ocean ruins. So we're going to need, again, sandstone and some other stuff. So let me put away some of this gravel stuff. And we're going to need sand instead, which I believe we still have some of here. Yep, sand, suspicious sand. And a bunch of sandstone, particularly the cut sandstone variety. Uh, so we'll use some of this stuff and we'll see how it goes. Ladies and gentlemen, the warm ocean ruins, pots and shards. Here we have the angler pot and angler shard. We got the snort angler pot and shard. Around the back here, we got the blank pot <laughs> and brick. <laughs> and then we have the shelter pot and shard on this side. Uh, and of course, we made this with some cut sandstone and some polished granite, which are the primary building blocks of the warm ocean ruins. We also got a bunch of sand down. We got some coral in here, some sea pickles. The uh, glowberries here are meant to represent like the kelp, since we can't actually have like waterlogged stuff here. Uh, we got the kelp instead, uh, acting as sort of its stand-in. And the only thing that I would really like to see, we of course got coral in here. Only thing I'd really like to see is I would like to be able to use the sniffer egg here in place of these uh, pots like this. And I can have this here like this, no problem. But the problem is that the sniffer egg will hatch eventually, meaning that it'll totally break and a sniffer will be walking around in this area. So we can't actually use the sniffer egg in that capacity here, unfortunately. Uh, it would be really nice, though, if there was some way we could prevent the sniffer egg from hatching. Similar to what we can do with turtle eggs by not planting them on sand. Um, 
yeah, maybe that would be possible to do something similar to that with the sniffer egg because it's a really great block and it's kind of a shame we can't actually use it uh, for things because there are a lot of uh, other uses for it. So, yeah, hopefully that will come in a future like dot update, like a 1.20.2 or dot .3. Um, but, yeah, unfortunately can't do it now. Otherwise, I would. Uh, so we'll have to do just the blank pots for now. But overall, I think this does a pretty good job of mimicking the warm ocean ruin shape and gives that warm ocean ruins vibe to it so i'm pretty happy with it overall so with those done uh that's both ocean ruins done we got the trails done we got the wells done down here desert wells uh and so that leaves one more structure where you can find the pottery shards and that is the desert temple uh and so we have kind of a small area here so i'm thinking what we might have to do, we might have to like have it come around like this type of deal. So like the temple will be like on a corner, sort of like this a little bit. Um, so it'll be like one part of the temple here, one part of the temple here, and then you walk in like the center here. At least that's what I'm thinking primarily here. Because <laughs> that would basically fill out the entire room then. So um, let's go ahead and start to build this desert temple here. I'll be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got the entirety of the ancient pottery and pottery shard area now complete. You can see we've put down carpet in here, added a few other things, but uh, yeah, most of the stuff you've seen remains the same, except this is new, the Desert Temple Pots and Shards. Let's get in here and take a look. We, of course, got the prize, pottery pot and shard. We got the skull. We got the archery with the bow and arrow uh, and the minor pot and pottery shard. And we still kept the... Like ways you can get in and out of the museum, which is nice. I'm pretty happy we were able to keep these. We also got the little area uh, that you dig the shards out of. So this is suspicious sand and just make some regular sand. This is meant to simulate like, like the new room in the desert temples. Uh, we also also <laughs> have the stairs, like the little stairs that you have on the side in the side bits that lead to the top. We also we're able to fit in like a little bit of like a gradient type thing, like in the back where you have that uh, pyramid shape almost. Uh, so we got that as well. Put a little bit of sand around uh, in addition to that uh, with the dead bushes. And yeah, still have the ability to come in any of these entrances or exits as well. Finally, I put this guy in here. This guy is saying, oh my gird, it's a shirt, which is what I honestly hear in my head every single time that I see the word shirt. <laughs> oh my gird, it's a shirt. I actually wanna make that a different color though. I wanna make that probably cyan, just so it's a little bit easier to read. But yeah, I thought I'd just put that in there just because it's hilarious. Oh my gird, it's a shirt. <laughs> I love it, I love it. And then we have the directory up here, hostile straight, floor three this way, floor one that way, and then slime straight down there, fantastic. Ancient pottery and pottery shirt area is now done. Shard area is now done. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, honestly. Like, I feel like each one of these things is like its own, like, distinct, unique, like, section that has sort of its own character, which is really what I was going for. And I think people really like this section. This is probably one of my favorite areas that we've made in the museum so far. So, yeah, I hope you guys like it. I hope you guys like it. Anyways, with this section now completed, we're ready to move on to the next section, which is actually going to be up top here on the third floor. Uh, you see I've moved the fox and the parrots already over to this area. And so that is because uh, we are actually going to be making the smithing template area right in here. Just like this whole area is going to be only smithing templates. So... Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that. Gotta move all my shulker boxes up from the second floor, which we have a ton of right here. Gotta move all these up. Uh, and I will be back once we are actually done with the smithing template room. Oh, baby, we're making some progress today, ladies and gents. Check it out. If we get up to the third floor, we got shulker madness going on. No, we're not looking at that. We're looking at the whole wing. Smithing templates and armor trims right here. Beautiful. Let's get in here. Take a look around at this, ladies and gentlemen. We have all of the smithing templates on display here. And you can see, for each smithing template, we made a little 3x3 representation. 
Actually, it's a 3x3x2 three by three by in this case, because these are actually, like, they have some depth to them. Uh, these are just 3x3s, three though. Uh, of the structure which the smithing template is located in. So, for instance, this is pillager outpost. So we got cobblestone, and we got some of the dark oak wood. We got the rib, which is found in nether fortress. So we got nether uh, brick fences and uh, some nether bricks. And then, of course, you know, ancient city. got skulk and cobble deep slate, etc. And then these are the first eight, I think, right here. And then we have the other... Uh, nine on this side so 17 in total got the tithe got the dune got the snout got the silence the rarest one then the netherite and then of course all the ones from the trail ruins with the coarse dirt and the gravel even got some uh yeah suspicious gravel in the back here in some spots and then of course the terracotta as well and for each one of these we put some information you know where it's found and the chances uh you have to find it and you know, what it's found in. It's found in, like, gravel, for instance. Like, all these are found in gravel. Whereas these are found in chests. And this one is, you know, from the Elder Guardian. So, pretty cool. And then in the back here, we have this nice little, like, little lounge area. With some armor trim facts. So, there's 16 trims in total. One upgrade, which is the netherite upgrade. There are five octillion. Which is a five with 27 zeros behind it. Possible trim and armor combinations in Minecraft. So... In short, you will never, ever see them all in your lifetime. Ever. You could try. Not happening, though. No. So, that's a lot of possible combinations. Uh, there are 12 structures that contain trims. There's 11 different crafting materials. And the rarest template is the Silence Armor Trim. So, just a nice little area here in the back where you can, you know, go between the two areas. And that's that. However, you might notice one thing missing. We have armor stands, but no armor. <laughs> Luckily, I went to the base, and voila, we had this armor just literally sitting in chests that has been accumulating throughout the season, so we're going to put it to use. Uh, I don't have all the smithing templates times four. Uh, some of them, like I think Dune, I have like 20 of, so we can definitely do like Dune fully decked out with, uh, with armor. But um, we're going to basically attempt to get as many smithing templates put down as we can, and then we want to make one of each, probably the chest plate, on each and every one of the uh, armor stands here today. And then throughout the rest of the season, we can just, you know, slowly accumulate things as we get more diamonds. Because I'm pretty sure we don't have the diamonds. Yeah, 28 diamonds. That's going to get us four smithing templates. <laughs> so we need more diamonds to duplicate more smithing templates to get everything uh, that we need. So, uh, let's grab this, let's put this back into our ender chest, and let's head back to our base. We're going to do some smithing. Netherite on iron? Don't mind if I do. Let's go! Let's go! Alright, that's huge. So with that chest plate, we're now like part of the way through this uh, whole process and we got the advancement smithing with style. So we've applied the spire, snout, rib, ward, silence, vex, tide, and wayfinder smithing templates at least once. That's actually a huge achievement. Um, so that's awesome. We're still going here. We've still got a lot more to do. Uh, but yeah, it's looking really really cool. Let's do a tide. Let's do a tide with let's say Gold yeah gold on diamond could be cool for this next one. Bam. There we go Sweet. So yeah, we're just trying to mix it up with the various types of material and yeah what we put on things uh, so <laughs> Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. This is fun Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to say that as of now we have at least one armor piece on every single one of these smithing template sections and more will be coming soon but if we take a look you can see it's made a massive difference and improved this area tremendously in terms of its aesthetics uh, and over here of course got all these down here as well I gotta say I really like this dune leather cap with the gold trim that looks really really sharp I think that top one um, so that's super cool to see and yeah just to see all the colors and all the possibilities here is really really neat and 
course, we will be filling these out over the course of time with different armor pieces as soon as we get more diamonds and can copy more templates. So that's awesome. But guys, we have gotten a ton done today. We got not only this smithing template section complete, but if we jump down here to our slime area and then back over here, we got the ancient pottery and pottery sherds section complete as well. Looking fantastic, if I do say so myself. I hope you guys have enjoyed. And yeah, until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Cub. Goodbye.